Hello, my name is Robert Arguez, and I'm the tutor for History 1301, sponsored by the Office of Student Success. Today I'll be talking to you about what led up to the Revolutionary War. To begin with, we got to go back to Chapter 4 and read a little bit of, of the history that led up to, to, to taxation. We have, the, we have Mercantilism, Navigation Acts, and the French and Indian War. Due, due to the French and Indian War, there was a large amount of debt that was created and um, Britain needed a way to pay it off. The way that Britain decided to pay it off was through taxations. They decided to tax the American colonists and that got them very upset. The, the reason why the colonists were upset with taxation is because they had no representation and no say so over what they wanted and what could be taxed. Uh, the first of the, the tax was the Sugar Act. Of course we know it taxed sugar, coffee, tea, wine, and other imports. Um, <clears throat> followed by the Stamp Act. Um, after the Stamp Act, Congress became a little upset and they decided to, to have, have a protest. They came up with the Stamp Act Congress to try and get it to be repealed. Later on, the Stamp Act was repealed and replaced with the Townshend Revenue Act. Along with taxations, um, it fired up the colonists even more to, to go towards a revolution because of the different types of, of acts that they would pass such as the Quarter Act, which forced them to house any troops in, in their homes against their own will, and the Declaratory Act, which made Parliament, whatever Parliament said, made sovereignty over the colonists' lives. So basically, whatever Parliament said, the colonists had to do it without having any say, so they were forced to do it. Um, other events here and there also let, put fire into the colonists to revolt against Britain, such as Boston Massacre, where um, the Britain troops fired against unarmed civilians um, with a little skirmish over in, 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 on, on the streets and um, later on with the Boston Tea Act sorry the, the, the Tea Act Sons of Liberties decided to come together and protest against this act by overthrowing the teas into the, the bus into the Boston harbors this is also known as the Boston Tea Party this outraged the King and Parliament of England and they decided to uh, give another act called the Intolerable Acts which uh, are also known as the Corrasive Acts. Uh, this act closes, closed all the ports of Boston, uh, restructured Massachusetts government, restricted town meetings to only one meeting per year, and um, along with, with, with other, other things that came along with this act. Uh, this, this got the, the colonists fired up even more, and they came together to do the first Continental Congress. In this Congress, they decided to... Um, to, to write a letter to, to the king letting them know that um, they're giving them a year to get all of this, this stuff done and if not they're going to come back together in a year and they're going to do something about it. Um, so they went off their way and before that year was over um, there was a, a skirmish over in Lexington and Concord also known as the shots heard around the world. This was the initiation of the Revolutionary War, where the Britain troops fired against colonists. Um, from here, uh, the 13 colonies came back together and they uh, made the Second Continental Congress. At this one is where they decided to raise up an army known as the Con Continental Army, and they made Washington uh, commander-in-chief of, of this army. Um, as you read on through, through the chapter, you'll, you'll read about the different battles and later on the Americans with winning the Revolutionary War. Once again my name is Robert Arguez. I'm the history tutor for 1301 sponsored by the Office of Sitting Success. Thank you.